<laughs> right, okay. Um, we're gonna, um, we're gonna, what the fuck are we gonna do? Right, we're gonna put Cena on this soffit. Uh, we're gonna put UP, UPVC fascia on there. Then we're gonna put some grass on the roof. So I'm gonna do a video for you. Um, this is the Cena we're using. It's 18 mil, it's got an 83 mil coverage, it's tongue and groove. Uh, we will secret nail it. I showed you how to secret nail it before. What we're gonna do, I've just eyed down that, pass us that Adam. I've just eyed down that there and I know it's dead straight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fix this piece of, not this piece here, but a piece of cedar all the way down that line to start off, because I know that will be dead straight. Um, what we'll do then, we'll keep progressing backwards. We've worked it out so that that will finish just there. And then when that's seen there, it will finish there and that will conceal that as well. We're gonna drop in these um, down lighters as well. And we're also gonna fill this cavity, which is above the wall structure, with rock wall when it arrives. Okay, so we are using Pazlord IM50, 18 gauge. 18 gauge because it leaves a smaller pinhole. This is secret fix, but there will be pieces of cedar that are first fixed as well. So the 18 gauge, we also use stainless steel brads on that as well. Yeah, you need to use stainless steel on cedar because the other ones rot and stain it. Right, so what we're gonna do, um, Adam's gonna cut, I'm gonna... Shout. Dominate, dominate, dictate, <laughs> dictate, and uh, dominate. what's your name again? <laughs> Jenny. Jenny's gonna fix. Oh, yeah. All right, Jenny. Oh, yeah. Right, so Jenny just pops her out of the way there. You can see the soffit, we've run it down, we've staggered the joints, obviously, that's what you want to do. Um, what you want to do when these go up there, make sure that your joint's good there, it's tight in, you can face fix it there because your face is going to come down and cover the nails. And obviously we're gonna secret fix it there as well. Is that joint good, Jenny? Uh-huh. So, while I'm doing this, I just want you to listen and listen really, really good, right? What I said about Rob Clevy, I wasn't slagging him off or saying I were better than him. What I actually said was that people are trying to compare me to him. I'm just a guy building garden rooms. Rob Clevy is obviously a master craftsman. I have no beef with Rob Clevy. <laughs> Well, having said that, if he wants to fight, I'll fight him. <laughs> I'll fight any man. <laughs> um, we're having down lighters in this soffit, so I'm just going to put them out with this hole saw. 70 mil hole saw. What I'm going to do, um, I'm going to move it backwards and forwards like that. And the reason being is that should should not. So it gets stuck if you keep if you give it a nice tight hole. What you need to do is get it in, move it around and make that hole just a little bit more bigger. Bigger. So we've got four rows on, we've cut the lights out. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna fill the cavity above the wall. Um, obviously, you just have a look up there. You can see the joist hangers in there. There you go. So the 100 mil insulation wouldn't push across. So what we're going to do now is fill it with this 100 mil rock wall. You can see there the insulation is pushed tight to the ceiling. Um, I'm not even going to explain why, but you know why if you're watching this. Um, so Adam's going to cut the rock wall, Jenny's going to pick the rock wall, and then we're going to drop the last bit of cedar in. And then what we'll do then, we will return down the sides, do the back, get the faces on, and then hopefully the grass will arrive for the roof. Right, we've done the front soffit, we're going to do the side soffit now. So what's going to happen now is, we, we built it so that it'll take one piece of cedar, so that length of is going to go down there, but that end there is going to butt up to the five strips we've got there, or at least one of them anyway. So what I've done, I've just put a little chamfer on that and sanded it down, so when it butts up to the to the one on the soffit on the front, then there's still that little bit deep. deep. There's still that little V detail there as well. So we're going to do that. We're going to go down the side. We'll turn around the back and come back up this side again. Just one piece of cedar all the way around. And then we will oil it and we'll start doing our soffit as well. Right, we're going to put this full replacement UPV. We're going to put this full replacement UPVC black fascia on. Um, what I've done, I measured the depth of the roof. So we need to go from the underside. So the cedar will sit there. Your 5 by 2 sits there, it's 154 mil. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna rip it down with this circular saw, and then I'm gonna pre-nail it, let it go up, and then we're gonna offer it up and nail it.
Yes, sir. What we're going to do, we're going to three, two, four and a half. Three, two, four, two and a half. Point five, yeah. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to cut it to length so that the centre of the fascia fits on the centre of the building. Adam's got a little bit of OCD and he likes it that way. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that with mullet salt anywhere, is that good? Put it with multi-tool and then we will trim the lip. Um, are you going to cut this, right? If I cut that there like that, it'll want to break and it might break that and it'll break it back. So cut through the lip first. Half of the front of the building. What we're going to do now is nail it. Holly tops, where'd they go? Holly top nails, they are. Um, they've literally got a holly top on them. They're stainless steel, they're ring cut. Um, there you go, see that? Yeah. yeah. So, what I'm going to do with them, I'm going to lay it like that, yeah. I'm going to then stand it up, hammer it through a little bit. I'll use my hammer as a spacer then, stand it up. And then what will happen then, all the nails will be uniform in a straight line and evenly spaced as well. Right, so we've obviously pre-cut this to height, but I've cut it sort of at that. What we're going to do now is rub it off there, off it up. Now, Jenny, if, if you can move my hammer on that one. Just edit me on the minute, pass it on there, will you? That's in my pocket, it's alright. Right, so what? What I'm doing, um, it's in the right position. I'm now, Janet, don't push it to me. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to send them on just a little bit. I'm pushing it up. I don't know how you've got to that side there. You can see now that nice detail that's now created on there. Um, the reason why I'm not sending these nails on fully. Is because the plastic fascia has got a plastic covering on it to prevent it from any damage. And if you send them on, then you're left with a little bit of plastic around there, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> get off. So that'll come off like that. I'll then go down. Go down and send these home. What you might want to do, sometimes, if that goes through and hits one of your nails, that your, uh, that your front 5 2 is fixed to, it's going to bend. So I know what Ash and Amy have been doing is measuring it and transferring marks on so that they don't hit a nail from behind. But I am flying by the seat of my pants and every day just winging it out there. Right, so there you go, that's halfway up. Um, that'll come off. It's flush now with the top. What'll happen is the peach will go over there, but we're fitting an artificial grass roof onto this. Um, artificial. Yes, not real. Alright. She's like, why is he not having a real grass? What's the point? <laughs> um, so we're gonna do the same over there. I'll then show you how to put the notch out of there so the corner trim fits it as well. So that's it, that's a nice little detail. That'll be oiled up. And that's black to match the roof. Okay. Okay, so if you look up there, Adam, you can see where the last fixing is. So what I've done, I've transferred the mark onto the hammer. Like that, so that when it goes up, the spacings will still be the same. Um, now, I know, I can take that mask in here. I know that one of you went, well, it looks a lot of crap because your fixings aren't the same as your, um, your curb trim on your rubber roof. Well, the curb trim on the rubber roof are pre drilled and in my mind there's not enough of them to do the facial with that many fixings so what Jenny's gonna do now she's gonna hold it flush with the end Jenny yeah hold on go on go on lad oh don't let go don't let go I'm going now yeah. what she's gonna do she's gonna hold it flush with the end you good yeah. Yeah, now Adam, come over here. 
So what we've done, uh, there's a first joint strip on there, so I've obviously left a little gap for it to drop in because it's got a tongue behind it. What I'm going to do now is go down, nail these permanently. What might happen now, you might see if I hit a nail behind and it'll bend and then if it does, I will show you how to get out of that situation. That would be a disaster. He pushed up, Jenny. Yeah. So that's that's the full face you're on. Um, I'll show you how to do the corner bit because you need to cut a little bit out of the notch to get around the corner so that the corner cover will cover it. There's a fascia jointing strip going in there. This will be trimmed back to 50mm so it doesn't protrude down below the curved trim joint as well. And hopefully the grass will arrive soon so we can show you how we're going to fit that as well. That's the side. So if you imagine that's the front now, the button up to each other to what we want. We want to close that gap there but obviously all this plastic is then in the way. Um, pencil. Got one. Right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna trim off that bit of plastic there like that. Adam look, looks there, look, I'm just gonna trim it off in line with the back of that. The little square then to take out. Um, that's taken out of there then like that. So imagine that's your front. It will then butt up to like that like that and then this preformed corner will then cover it and conceal any joint. Can you see that Adam? Mm -hmm. Any joint you've got. So that's what you want to do there, a little notch out with that like that. Um, I'm going to then get my poly tops and my hammer, I'm going to push this up. I'm going to nail this in place rather than nail it on the floor because it's full length and it's flexing. Jenny, do you want to get to that end and nail it up in the place? Jenny, watch that rubber look, pull it down. It's hitting a nail, isn't it? Right on the roof, just lay it on the roof. Right, from somewhere along here, I can feel there's a nail holding it off. Is it a nail or is it a roof board? It's a nail. Got some glue there. Obviously, this needs to come off because that plastic will um, show any little deviation in it, and you want it to run through nice and straight. You good, Jenna? So, we're gonna offer that up, push it where it needs to go. You're right. And again, I'm gonna stand the nail like that, rotate it up, get it started, and then I'm gonna push that soffit, up, uh, fascia rather, up into place. I'm not gonna send them home because I still need to get that plastic trim off there. Once I've got maybe six in here, then Jenny can let go of that end. The hammer is facing, it's, it's, I think, I think it works out about every 450 mil or something, depending on what kind of hammer you've got. Um, but it works out well and it looks smart. So if you're interested in building one of these, it's the same standard we do. We sell build packs. Basically, it's full instructions and full materials list for a specific size of build. Uh, there's 13 different sizes. It's built to the exact same spec we still use today. Um, I possibly will update it when we do Kingspan Roof, which will be happening soon. And we're also gonna do, we're showcasing for another company now, but I'm not allowed to tell anybody just yet. So that'll be something to look forward to. A new product that's on the market that they want us to do. Because for some bizarre reason, people tend to like us, don't they, Jenna? Mm -hmm. And send them all home. Will you move the vessels for us, Jenna, please? 
corner we've notched it out that corner then will go on there like that and conceal everything a nice tidy little finish and a nice little detail as well we're gonna do the sides back around there and then that will be complete we'll get the trims on and then hopefully the rubber roof will be turned up by then not the rubber roof the uh, actual roof grass 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 yeah. right so what we're doing this rubber's been on this roof a week or so now um obviously it's rained a bit there's a lot of dust on this site we're working on so what we're going to do, we're going to get all the dust off, let it naturally dry in the sun then, and then we can adhere our grass to it when it finally arrives. Right, so we did the fascias and soffits yesterday. Um, the grass didn't arrive on time, it came late, but it has arrived now. So we're up on the roof, we've blown it off, we've cleaned it off, we've stretched this bit out. You can see the natural rolls in it there where it's just been rolled. They will drop out when the sun sits on it, but what you need to do with it, I don't know, Jen, can you see the grain is going that way? Can you see that? Yeah. So, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, because you always do, but the people who supply the grass tell me that the grain wants to point to the house, so that when you look at it, you're looking at it like that. Can you see that, Jen? Because otherwise it looks plasticky, and when the sun comes on it, it stands up more anyway, so, once we've got it down, what we'll do then is go around with a stiff brush and just race all the grain like that. Can you see that, Jen, yeah? Yeah. Um, I know if it was on the lawn, you'd be putting sand in there and aerating it with a brush, but obviously it's not on the lawn. It's on a rubber roof and drainage. Right, so, can you see the holes? Yeah, so they're the drainage holes. So what will happen is the water will drain through there, it'll go onto the rubber roof and it'll follow where it's supposed to go and run to the back of the building. What we will do, we will... Um, Adam! Come here a minute. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to mechanically fix it on the edge with the P-trim. I'll, I'll show you how we cut that so it's flush with the edge of the building. And then mechanically the P-trim will hold it. Throw us a tube of that stuff, will you? Sorry, mate. Uh, so mechanically the P-trim will hold it and then what I'll do then, I'm going to put some stripes of this glue and the stripes will go like that. I don't want to put them like that because when the water goes down it'll dam on there. So if I put them in the direction that the roof is flowing, then the water will still drain away at the end of the roof. Um, straight away, I'll just showing it. Yeah, just showing it. So this is what they supply, grass fix. Um, I've no idea if it's just basically a green silicon, God knows, but it does actually stick the grass successfully to the rubber as well. And I did a test piece on it overnight and it didn't burn through the rubber or anything. It's basically, the back of that is rubber anyway. So that's rubber. So literally just bonding rubber to rubber. In my mind, this will extend the life of the roof by a lot of years. Um, this is a really good quality grass. It comes in four meter wide strips. The roof is, 4.8 so what we're going to do there's another roll behind Jenny there as you can see that um, and we're going to join it together with this tape that they supply um, I, I suppose it's meant for lawns but it does successfully I'll show you how to join it as well we'll put the tape on there we'll put some of this grass fix on there and then that will bond together and then we'll ensure that the grain is together and I'll show you how they tell me how to put the grain together as well so that basically will be the grass astroturf roof. Um, I'll, I'll carry on showing you a video for the rest of today and hopefully we'll get it finished today as well. Right, so I've got the first piece down. Like I say, I'm going to have to join it because it comes in four metre lengths, this particular brand of grass. Um, they tell me the wider lengths are not as good as quality. Whether or not it's a sales line with them, I don't know, whatever. But it's a really good quality bit of grass. So what Jen's doing now, she's brushing against the grain to raise it. You can see where she's done a full stripe there. And then we're starting to lose the roll marks where it's been rolled. What she's going to do, she's going to brush it all like that. She, that's the end there. So the end basically is where the water runs off. So I'm going to bond that to the end there. But I'm not going to put 
a continuous bond along because that will stop the rainwater. What I will do, I'm going to put diagonal stripes like that, a bond, so it sticks it down, but the water, the rainwater can still flow through the holes, go onto the rubber and drop down into the gutter. But you can see there now, look, it's a 20 mil grass. Um, I, I, obviously you can't feel it, but it actually feels like real grass. If you look at it closely, it looks like there's dead bits in it as well. So, she's, um, she tells me it's hard work and she's sweating. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's doing it wrong, you can tell she's doing it wrong. Anyway. What do you mean? You said you started off doing it slowly and it was better at a lower angle and now you've changed your position completely. Right, so she's going to do that. What I'm going to do now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to trim it to the same size as the roof. We've got it in a position there where I know the back is... I've, I've left five mil, uh, five mil like before it starts to go over, so I want to bond it down there, so... But it's too long on the side and too long on the front, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut that now. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to trim it off, right? There, there, look, there you can see there, Jen. There's my fascia, there's my rubber, my rubber's going over 50 mil, so that, that'd be good for normal with my P trim, that, that'd be perfect for that. But obviously, I want this grass to be bonded down by the P trim, so the P, I'm going to cut the grass in line with the roof, the P trim will sit down there, it will tr mechanically trap the rubber, and the top of the P trim will also mechanically trap the grass to stop any wind uplift. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, this is the easiest way I've found of doing it without risking cutting the rubber. So what I've done, I've put my spirit level <coughs> dead on the roof there and I'm just going to move it back about four mil because as the grass goes up like that it elongates if you know what I mean so if I cut it there by the time it drops down it'll be slightly longer so just spit on the roof then so I'm just going to move that back so the key with this now is to keep pressure on there you want a clean not a clean a brand new Stanley blade and I'm just going to run it down the edge of my level like that obviously it's paramount that I don't cut the rubber on the roof, which this won't. Um, so what I'm going to do, Jen's filming now, there's only two of us. I'm going to get Jen off filming now because I need her to hold the end of this level so the level doesn't move. But you can see what I'm doing there. I'm cutting that, it's in line with the level, but by the time it drops down, it'll be in line with the roof. Right, so that's the first piece. I've cut it to the perimeter of the building, put it all the way around. So the peaching will hold the perimeter, uh, the grass fix will hold will hold the rest of the roof, top any wind uplift. And then this back, I'm gonna try and let it relax. Um, it was really sunny yesterday, but it's not today. Um, <clears throat> but it will naturally relax anyway. And then I'll bomb that down diagonally so that the rain can still drip off it anyway. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get this piece here, we're gonna roll it out. We're gonna join it with this joining tape and this glue. Right, so because the four meter strips, the roof's 4.8, we're having to lay it this way, which is better anyway, because that's the grain you want facing the house, so it looks like proper grass, because when you look at it that way, it tends to look plastic. When the sun shines on it, as I said, it will rise up like that. Um, right, so we're going to join it with this joining tape. It's got like a, sort of like a fiber on there. It feels like some kind of material based thing. So what we've done, we've put that under the joint like that, and we're going to put this grass, grass fix on it. But if Jenny comes here closely, I'll show you what we've done. So the guy who sold me this, or the company who sold me this, told me that you need to trim it so that you've got a piece. So you can see the, the rib there, rib, 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 flat bit, yeah? So you've got a full flat bit, and then this bit here wants trimming on the rib, so it matches up. So you've got rib, 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 flat bit, rib, 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 and so on. And that'll match up. So when that goes down like that, what'll happen then, we'll have glued that, We'll just peel back them like that, gently. Then, can you see that, Jen, now? So when, when, when I've peeled it back and caressed it, then you, can, you can't even see the joint in it. And that's what we're going to do all the way down. And then once I've joined that there, I'm going to go around and re-trim that. Jen's going to keep brushing, and then I'll put the P-trims on, which will mechanically secure it. If Jen turns around over there and sees, it's like a wind tunnel here. But basically what's happening is all the wind is coming down over them fields and hitting us straight in the face. So, my concern with that be, would be wind uplift, but this glue, like I said, I did a test patch at home, left it, and it glued successfully, so they obviously know what they're doing. Uh, grass fix, it's called, because I know loads of people will ask me, grass fix. Comes with the grass, uh, and that's it, yeah. Right, so we're going to join it, we're going to peel it back, we're going to rub it so it looks nice, dispose of the joint like that. Can you see that, that joint now? It's gone, Jen. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? And that's how it'll look then. Right, so this, this is the fall of the roof, it's going that way, and there's the two part got a trim on the back there, if you can see that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue it, 
in a line, diagonal stripes like that, so they're unbroken, uh, sorry, they're broken lines, so that the water can still come down, it'll hit the sealant and then still track off and run off the roof. And I'll do that all the way down. You see there's a slight little curl on it there, just where it's been in the end of the roll. So what we're gonna do is put the timber on top of there just to weigh it down. Right, so I've, I've cut the grass to the perimeter of the building. Um, I'm now I'm gonna put on this pea trim. Um, it's rubber roof pea trim. So what happens is, so what will happen is that pea trim will sit over the roof like that. It will mechanically trap the rubber. It will also mechanically trap the grass as well from any wind uplift. Um, I'm not gonna brush the grass back there on the edge. So when it's flat like that, the pea trim can sit down better on it. So when the pea trim's on, I'll then brush up the sides of it. So before I put this pea trim on, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pull back that grass there and I'm just gonna put a bead of this grass fix all the way up, just as an extra precaution, really. Um, I, know, I know that the pea trim will mechanically fix it anyway, but what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a bit of that up there like that and bond like i say i'm going to go with the grain of the grass there because i don't want the grass sticking up because when this piece sits on there like such it will sit down better when the grass is flat so i'll get that into its position there and then i'm going to fix with these black poly tops you have to push it back now because you've got fighting against the grass a little bit Tops. Jenny, just lift it up and then push it down but back at the same time, that's it. So there's an elongated hole in the pea trim. So what I'm looking to do is not overfix the pin so that pea trim, when, it, when the sun gets on it, it can still stretch and expand. So this, this is laid flat now, so what Jenny will do, she'll obviously push that off, but I'll just go down the edges there and just finger the grass up and then that'll all sit nice like that. So we're going to have the wind coming this way, it's going to hit there, it's not going to get under the grass. The grass is mechanically trapped under the pea trim, the rubber for the roof is mechanically trapped with the pea trim as well. We've also put a bit of bond on there to glue it down just as an added precaution. Um, it's, it's a new procedure so kind of just like winging it a little bit but this is in my mind how this is going to work and I can't see any issues with it at all. Uh, put on the life of the roof um, and it looks, looks a lot nicer than your black expansive roof as well because obviously we're looking out there from the living room. It looked like a green roof the conifers there behind will all obviously grow back over and everything. Um, and that's it, so that is sort of like practically end. I'll show you when it's finished as well. We'll jump up there and let you have a little look. Um, but that's it, that's your soffits, your fascias. See the soffit, UPVC, UPVC fascia. I've shown you rubber roofs before and we've then put on this 20 mil artificial grass. So there you go, that's your full astroturf roof, plastic fascias, curb trims, and uh, see the soffit as well. We've put the timber on the back there just to hold the curl down to glue the back in diagonal stripes. Like I said, the timber's just holding it down just so it goes off on the glue. So obviously the, the roll was curled up. But in all essence, that is it. So that's your roof done. So if you'd like to like, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever else you want to do, that would be great. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.